the mythology of dandelions. Ooh. According to astrology, dandelions have lots of spiritual connections to the stars and heavens. They are closely associated with the planet Jupiter, the element of air, and the astrological signs of both Pisces and Sagittarius. Dandelion is the only flower that represents the three main celestial bodies of the sun, the moon, and the stars. This is because the yellow flower resembles the sun, the puffball is the moon, and the dispersing seeds resemble the stars. Now a lot of dandelion's magical properties are well grounded in its actual scientific benefits. Now in the world of Wicca and magic, it's primarily associated with healing, purification, defeating negativity, and summoning spirits. And all of these have real scientific application, except for the summoning spirits. Yeah, unfortunately, science doesn't have a very good handle on that yet. Do you need to boost your psychic abilities? Then dandelion tea is the way to go. And not only can it help you with divination, but it can also help you clear your third eye and call spirits. Here's what you need to do. Make a tea using dandelion roots. Place it by the side of your bed. And make sure it's still piping hot and steaming while you go to sleep. If you do this right, you will attract whatever spirits you want to invoke to you. And I'm trusting that you're invoking the happy-go-lucky spirits and not the evil, nasty ones, huh? Apparently, dreaming about dandelions isn't always a good thing. As dandelion dreams can often be an omen of misfortune, a foreshadowing of enemies about to puddle you, or even loved ones about to deceive you. Although some people believe the exact opposite and say that dandelions in your dreams represents a symbol of hope and happy union with others. Some people just gotta be contrary. However, if you're wanting to help yourself out in this realm and not the spiritual one, then dandelion still got your back. Dandelion is apparently a fabulous way to stabilize and ground your emotions. Not only do spiritualists say it can help strengthen the emotional body, bring a stronger sense of self, but it can also help people who are fearful of change. And because it is a bitter digestive, its power helps to draw the bitterness out of you, making you a sweeter person. It is said that when dandelion is woven into a wedding bouquet by the bride, then it will bring good luck for a newly married couple. Now here's one of my favorite myths about dandelions. If you bury it in the northwest corner of your yard or house, it's said to bring good luck and fortune. According to other sources, burying it in the northwest corner will bring favorable winds to you. Now this might actually be linked back to the Japanese goddess Shinasuhin. Now she has this crazy cool ceremony involving nine dandelions. Feel free to peruse and enjoy. Make sure you save that last dandelion. Now there are a bunch of other deities that are really big fans of dandelions as well. Now some say Aphrodite is dandelion's biggest fan because of her connection to the bees. As bees love some good dandelion themselves. Saint George is also a close personal friend of dandelion. But the biggest connection has to go to Theseus and Hecate. And because dandelion is able to regenerate from even a teensy tiny piece, it is associated with rebirth and immortality. And that gives it the ability to invoke Hecate. All you need to do is gather fresh dandelion, slice it up into discs, string those puppies onto a thread and let them dry. Boom! It's Hecate time! But the other half of this association goes to the story of Theseus and the Minotaur. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. King Minos of Crete was all, y'all better send me seven women and men every year to feed my crazy minotaur, or I'm just gonna kill y'all myself, cause I'm mean like that. Well, Theseus was all, man, screw this, I'm tough. I'm gonna go kill this half man, half bull beastie and save a bunch of people. So he offers himself up to sacrifice, and this leads to him meeting Princess Ariadne. She's all, Theseus, you're hot. He's all, I know, I like to work out. And she's like, get me off this lousy eye and I'll help you kill that nasty beastie. And he's like, cool, 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 tight, tight, tight. And so she says, here's some wicked cool thread, you know, so you can like find your way into the labyrinth and back out again after you whoop his ass. Oh, and a sword, that might help a little bit too. Now what a lot of people don't realize is that Hecate actually visited Theseus before he even got to Crete. And she said, man, there's no way you can beat this guy with your tiny butt, he's half bull. You need to bulk up on some dandelion. So she fed him dandelion for 30 days. After which Theseus was all, oh yeah, I'm like super strong now, let's do this thing. 
And he did. Bam! In the story. Now the odd thing is, according to certain historians, Hecate wasn't involved. Apparently, someone along the way mistook Hecale for Hecate. You see, Hecale was a healer in Athens. And according to Plutarch's Parallel Lives, she was the one who helped Theseus out, not Hecate. It's okay, Hecate. You can share in Dandelion's glory now if you want. We're not stingy. What's that down there I see? A subscribe and like button? Well, click away, my friends! And if you really like the video, make sure you share it with your friends, hit the bell button so you get notifications of future videos. Happiness for all! Woo! Now I've got a fun interactive dandelion blowing wishes and stuff quiz coming up very shortly. But first, here's a few more crazy legends that'll make you smile. Let's start off by holding dandelion under our chin. If it tickles you and makes you laugh, then you like butter. But if it doesn't tickle you, then you're not a butter lover. And you should get out of my house right now. Go. Next, if a child holds a dandelion under their chin and a golden glow appears, then that kitty is gonna be filthy rich one day. Yeah! Wait, wait, wait. You mean their chin actually glows? It doesn't just glow. Why is he smiling at me? According to some, it's actually just how much yellow rubs off underneath your chin. Oh. That's cool too. Now if you did the same thing in 18th century England, the more golden glow you see meant just how sweet and kind your kid would be. You wanna know how much taller your kid's gonna get? Then according to one legend, you need to send them outside in early spring to bring back a dandelion stem. The length of the stem will be equal to the number of inches or centimeters your child will grow in the upcoming year. Dandelions are also closely knit to Christianity in a couple of ways. Now, dandelions are one of the bitter herbs that are believed to have been present at the Last Supper of Christ. And because of this, dandelions are also closely linked to Passover. They are also used to represent the passion of the Christ. And you can often find them depicted in paintings of the Madonna or the Crucifixion. And that brings us to what many of you have been waiting for, the origins of the myths about dandelion wishes. Now there isn't a lot of historical data on how this actually started, but what many believe is that it actually originated with the ancient Celts in what is now France before 1000 AD. No one knows for sure. How many seed blowing techniques do you actually know? Do you know them all? Let's find out. Let me know your results in the comments down below. First up, wishes. By simply making a wish before you blow on a dandelion, you can make your wish come true. Though most believe you actually have to blow off all of the seeds in order for your wish to come true. If you're able to catch a flying dandelion seed, you can make a wish on that as well. Have you heard the ones about love? Now apparently whispering your thoughts to a dandelion and then blowing on the seeds can carry your thoughts to your loved one. Now some say this actually works best when you pluck each one of the seeds and blow it in the direction of where your loved one is supposed to be. Oh man, my wife left her phone behind and need to tell her to get me some more chocolate. I know what to do. Now if you give one good hearty blow, depending on how many seeds you leave behind, it could be telling you a couple different things. Those remaining seeds could either be the number of children you're going to bear or father, how many years you have left before you get married? Or the number of seeds left could even amount to the number of years you have left to live. Ugh, better not blow too hard on that one. Let's play he loves me, she loves me not. You know, whatever sexual orientation you choose. If you want to know if your loved one is thinking of you, then blow on the head of a dandelion. And if one seed is left over, then oh yeah, you are heating up their thoughts, baby. Mm. But thoughts aren't enough, I mean, do they really love you? Blow off all the seeds in a single puff, and it means that someone out there loves you with a burning, passionate love. I've got the hots for him. <laughs> it may not be the person you're thinking about, but hey, someone loves you, baby. Of course, there's another version that says yes. If you blow them all off in one go, then the person you truly love truly loves you back. But it's more fun not knowing, right? Right? However, if some of the seeds remain after you blow, then your lover has some reservations about the relationship. It might be time for some counseling, or perhaps a good long talk. And if a lot of seeds remain, then that love just isn't flowing. Might be time to move on, my friend. Ugh. How you doing on the dandelion quiz so far? Pretty good? Let's keep going. Some people believe that you can tell the time by blowing on dandelions. Here's how it works. The number of breaths it takes to blow off all the seeds equals the hour of the day. <laughs> come on. Personally, this is the most outrageous belief. I mean, blowing on dandelions is clearly about your oxygen capacity and not about what time it is. 
And last but not least, if you've got a really bad habit that you just can't seem to get rid of, then associate that habit with a dandelion puff. Really focus. And then blow that nasty habit away and out of your life forever. So, how'd you do? We counted a total of 12 general beliefs. If you got either one of those versions in some of them, we give you the point. So, let me know in the comment section down below how you did. If you're loving this video, then you should check out the mythology of Mint next. Have a magical day, dandelion lovers. Take care of each other, and may all of your dandelion wishes come true. I mean, clearly blowing on dandelions is more about your oxygen... Purification. Defeat. Defeating?